All right, Isaac, welcome. Hi, thank you. Welcome back to Seneca. Th thank you for having me. When did you graduate? 2005. The year I actually started teaching here. Oh, cool. I, I left and you came. That's kind of it, actually. I believe you were here for a while, which is really kind of cool. <clears throat> yeah, I graduated valedictorian and then went straight to working in the AV office. Now you're doing a whole ton of stuff, and technology and having to learn things is sort of uh, rather key to every day that you're working. Yeah, it's funny, because when I graduated, digital was just sort of in its infancy coming out. Canada didn't go HD until like 2008, right? So we were using digital cameras that were still SD, but when I graduated, I knew more about digital technology than a lot of the people who were veterans. And I think they kind of resented that. They didn't like the idea that this young guy knew more, because really I was quite stupid. But I, I thought I knew a lot. <coughs> and so typical I got in trouble with people. Or typical grad. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Like, but I mean, you spend a lot of time studying, and you feel like you've got a handle on things. And it isn't until you get into a real world application that you realize you really don't know anything. But you know enough to teach yourself out of that problem. So I, I graduated into this world that was digital, and I, I tried to apply it as well as I could. But in the world that I was in, in an analog world, everybody had very stationary, singular jobs. But in digital, you could do a bunch of stuff, right? You could run mm -hmm. the camera and audio, and you could do the lighting. But that attitude was really looked down upon. Whereas now, if you want a job, mm -hmm. that is the only option, right? Like so many places where I work, like that's just sort of the expectation mm -hmm. that you come with that background of knowing how all the other stuff works. And you can make great money if you're able to handle that stuff, because you're effectively pilfering out of other people's jobs, right? Like, well, we don't want to hire a sound guy. How about I pay you 20% more, and you're the sound guy, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is kind of a weird feeling. You're thinking, wait, I'm taking a job away from a guy, but you know what? If I don't do that job, then they'll just find somebody else who can. I think the way that it always works is that the big places always say, like, no, this is what works. This is how we've always done it. And then smaller places come out with great stuff and everyone's like, how did you do that on such a crap budget? Mm -hmm. And when they reveal their methodology, which reveals that they had people double shifting jobs, then suddenly the bigger kids are like, well, why are we paying so much money to do it this other way? I mean, I remember when it was film versus digital, and at right, TIFF, yeah. there was a whole conversation yeah. about how, well, only the best movies are getting you know, rewarded at the Oscars, and all the Oscar films are film, and they're not digital. And that's simply because studios weren't putting money mm -hmm. into digital film, but now, I, I would like to know an audience member who could honestly look between modern film and modern digital and actually tell me that they can see the difference mm -hmm. or that mm -hmm. they enjoy the production somehow yeah. different. Like the technology has come to a place where it's, it's irrelevant. Like it's all about yeah. what is the audience experience. Yeah, cool. So the end, the end result really did, does, does it make the impact you want it to make? Yeah. I mean, I love yeah. technology. I yeah. love playing with different toys, but every... So toys, like what, what, uh, what are you working with now? What, what camera are you shooting now? So my personal camera is the Sony FS700, mm -hmm. but I was recently up in Frobisher Bay in Iqaluit shooting with the FS7. Mm -hmm. um, but like cameras, I mean a camera generally always works the same as any pinhole camera, right? You have your aperture, you have your sensor, um, and then you have a place to put that image. But at the end of the day, they all, they're all very similar, but they all have their own little flavors. Mm -hmm. So you know, the C300 and the FS72 very similar. They do a lot of very similar things, yeah. um, but it's just where's the buttons and where are the ergonomics of this particular thing and what rail system do I need to make it work with a matte box? So it, in, terms, in terms of different cameras, you, you kind of have ones that you'd like to use and your favorites. Um, do you see a need to always keep learning another camera or is what you have going to work for a while? Uh, I will say for me, yeah. I don't like playing the technology race mm -hmm. because you're no, I, I don't feel like I'd ever win that because I have a family, right? Like I don't want to tell my son and my wife that like, oh, sorry, we can't go on vacation because dad has got to get a new red dragon, right? Like it's so, and I think that if you're in that game, you are probably working in the higher end commercial world where what they want is the newer cameras all the time. Mm -hmm. And as an individual buyer, you might be able to do that faster than rental companies can do it. So if that's the market that you're working with, then that's great. For me, I'm not too interested in doing a ton of different stuff. I mean, when I work with corporations, they very rarely care what camera I have. They only care about what the end result is. Like if I talk tech to them, their eyes roll into the back of their heads and I'm afraid they're going to fall into a coma. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I just have to tell them like this is going to be the end result. Mm -hmm. And if they're okay with it, then, then that's what we go Have with. you had to educate some of those corporate people that when they go, uh, so your camera's digital, right? 
Yeah. Well, well, yeah, but is it like, is it 6K? Because if it's not 6K, you know. Well, that it, happens. It, it, yeah. How do, you, how do you deal with that? The people who, they hear a term and they think, oh, well, you know, you're not shooting on red? Well, because apparently red's the best. Uh, I can tell you that my, I actually learned this lesson very early. When I graduated, I was working with a sound guy who asked me, he was young like me at the time, because I'm an old man now. Right. And uh, <laughs> oh, he, yeah. yeah, I'm an ancient one. Um, and so uh, he said, what do you think your job is? And I was confused by the question, so I was like, I'm a camera operator? And he's like, no, Isaac, our job as techs is to provide the best quality technical production possible, even if that means educating the client. And my response was, I, that's not my job. Like, my mm -hmm. job is not to lecture somebody as to what their production is. My job mm -hmm. is to listen to what they want. I provide them with options based on what they want. And even if they pick an option, that's crap. But it's their choice. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember, remember the band The Sheepdogs? Mm -hmm. When they were yeah, first yeah. getting onto like, the cover of Rolling Stone magazine, I was doing a piece with country music television. And we were doing it at the docks. And we were facing back towards the city of Toronto. But the sun was setting effectively behind our interview. And we had these two big white bounce sheets that were happening. And, um, and I just couldn't get enough light on them. And so I had to overexpose the background. And I pointed it out, pointed to the monitor. I'm like, hey, producer, we've, like, the background's like, overexposed by two stops. And he's like, it's not a problem. And you know what my response was? It's not a problem. Yeah. Right? If they're OK with it, I don't care. Like, that's, yeah. Yeah. It is their production. It's not for me to lecture somebody and say, that's not technically correct. Right? Well, you pointed it out to them. You showed them yeah. the effect of it. And this is, yeah. this is where it is. And, and then they decide, right? Mm -hmm. It's sort of like if you're painting somebody's house and you're like, well, what do you want? Oh, I want the room to be light and breezy and airy. And it's like, cool. We are using black paint. <laughs> that might not make it bright and breezy. And they're like, yeah, yeah, but I like it. OK. You know, yeah. like I yeah. present the options. And then yeah. they're like, I don't, I don't feel a need to, to tell anybody what they need to do. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, if they want to use the red camera and they want to pay the money to rent it, I'm happy to use it, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, whatever. What do you own? So you I own? own a lot of stuff. Like, I mean, so I own the GoPro yeah. Hero 4. I own the FS700 with a rail system, a bunch of lenses. I own a bunch of lights, Kino Flows, Lowell's, Dato Lights. Um, I own the Bolts, Draycasts, all LED, battery-powered, bicolor mm -hmm. LEDs. Yeah. Um, I uh, have big soft boxes like Octobanks. Mm -hmm. I also have the Reefa kit. I have a lot of crap. So a lot. So <laughs> one, a, a, a good camera, uh, a, a sort of a, a, a the GoPro, and then a whole lot of grip and lighting. Yes, and mm -hmm. I also have a Canon 5D, mine's of Mark II, mm -hmm. um, and I usually use that as a B camera or just to do some, you know, yeah. scouting tech stuff. Like I, I got to tell you, a lot of places that I work. They will also use, especially for investigative journalism pieces, we'll use iPhones. Yeah. And the reason is because it's the effect of what you're trying to get to. I, I worked with a guy who was covering terrorists trying to cross the border into Turkey. Mm -hmm. And you can't very well show up with a big camera on the border of Syria and Turkey and hope not to get harassed by the military. Yeah. But if you show up with an iPhone, well, everyone's got an iPhone. Mm -hmm. So suddenly you get access to something you could never get access to mm -hmm. before. It used to be that uh, when the Canon 5D Mark II came out, uh, journalists were able to go and get video out of Beijing at a time when that wasn't really possible because the Beijing police didn't know that that camera recorded video. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, everybody knows it records <laughs> videos. So now you've got to go a whole different route. But like, yeah, yeah the, the camera itself, the, its physical form, gives, gives a sort of different type of access. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you show up to a film and they're using an iPhone, you might think of them as a joke, right? Like, yeah. why are you using an iPhone yeah. for the latest Avengers movie? It's probably not going to work out. Yeah. But, but it changes the attitude of the people around you and the production that you're doing. Every tool has a job, right? Absolutely. Cool. So it's all about, so it's, it's, it's not the technology, it's how you use it. Yeah. Uh, and it's what the end result is to the, uh, to, to, to the viewer. Oh, yeah. And the technology is always going to change, yeah. right? Especially now in digital, where things morph a lot. So I find myself studying all the time. I mean, I graduated in 2005, and I remember one of my old audio teachers, Paul Sellers, mm -hmm. telling me, I asked him, when do you need to stop taking all these courses to keep up? And he's like, I'll let you know when I stop myself, right? And the guy had, was in his 60s and working at CTV as a full-time audio guru. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and I understood that when I graduated, that like, oh yeah, it doesn't mean you can't work. It means if you have a fresh curiosity in whatever your job happens to be, right? There's a lot of, mm. I mean, not to hyper-focus on tech. I love tech, mm -hmm. so that's what I work on. You know, there's audio, there's editing, there's studio control, there's cameras. But 
But there's a lot of soft jobs that surround the TV production and film production, whether you're a coordinator or a producer. Producers have really tough jobs, mm -hmm. right? And so there's a lot of soft skills that you need. I think probably the biggest one is interpersonal, yeah. right? Like you can't train attitude. Yeah. I can train somebody how to press a button like a monkey, but I can't train that monkey to behave nicely when I walk in the room, right? right. <laughs> or to show up on time. Showing up on time.